Alrighty boys, back with another video. Today the topic is quests are boring. So why I want to cover this is because it has a lot of dev replies, like a lot. So I thought why not, let's cover it, let's see what the devs have to say. I just thought there was a lot of replies, I didn't see exactly what the dev said. But um, yeah, I thought we should go over this together and see what it's all about. Alright, so we're just going to keep it uh, to the point. We're going to read the first uh, person, like the first post, like the person who posted it. And then go to the dev replies. And uh, like always, uh, first link down below in the description. Playlist to all the up-to-date uh, news on Bannerlord and uh, guides and all that other stuff. Alright, let's do it. Quests are boring, alright? And then he states, just that there isn't a single quest that caught my attention enough to keep playing. To keep me playing, it's repetitive and grindy. There are, should be other ways to make progress. Okay, so he wants different ways to complete um, certain quests. I feel like there is, but not for all quests, right? And I do kind of agree that the quests are a little bit, you know, sim simple. Some quests are kind of cool. I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I played all the quests, so some of them are kind of cool in my opinion, but a lot of them are kind of, like he states, um, repetitive and grindy. Okay. Alrighty, and I'm pretty sure there's nothing on the first page in terms of dev replies. There isn't. Let's go to second page. Boom, boom, boom. There it is. First big reply. Alrighty, so uh, this dev uh, quoted a player. The, the player said, I've said it before, quests are, are boop uh, because they don't actually impact the world. I supplied grain to the same village several times in a row. Tools, cows, whatever, they, they don't get raided. Life should be fantastic. Does it affect the number of bandits? Nope, it does. Does it change the quest? Nope. Does it do anything to improve relations? Nope. Um... I think it does impact, but at the same time, I think the scope, um, let's say you give a town a bunch of grain, it's not going to affect the world per se, but the village is going to be better. But at the same time, like we don't really get to see how much uh, the village consumes that uh, grain, how much, like how fast it's consumed. So it probably does change it, but not to the big effect of where you can actually see the change. So yeah, uh, I think some quests should obviously change more and some should change less it all depends but um you might not see the change but it might be there but it just might not be big enough that's what i think but let's see what the desert say so the desert says this isn't true uh naturally you mean you may mean they don't impact the world enough yeah exactly like, kind of like what i said like they might impact it but just not you know something that we can actually see how it impacts but i can only go with what you actually write Issues have preconditions, issue effects, and resolutions. Okay, so issues by issues, he means it's quests, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, the resolutions is either success, failure, or cancel consequences. Okay. They resolve over time by AI lords or through the player uh, taking quests. Preconditions typically, preconditions typically look at if suitable characters are in the location and if the world, and more specifically the location, are in a suitable state for an issue to occur okay if the pre preconditions are met there is a chance for an issue to occur pretty much what he's saying is um the game looks for certain things and um whenever let's say a player is close by you as being the player and um you know other conditions are met um the village that you're near uh, a quest will pop up if that kind of makes sense and uh, he states, uh, issues effects are continuous negative effects that apply for as long as the issue is active and affect the uh, location and or character that has the issue. Uh, best way to explain this is if you take the quest, um, need help with brigands. I think that's you know, probably not brigands, probably s you say it somewhere else, you know what I mean? It is what it is. But you know what I'm talking about. The one where it spawns a bunch of... Um, bandits and you have to um take out like two to four parties depending on how far you're you are in your game but um if you leave that quest just open and don't actually do it the world will be literally overrun by bandits so that's what he kind of means like negative effects will occur if you just leave it open or the longer you leave it open and different quests have different negative effects then he states resolution consequences can affect the player if they are involved through the quest as well as the location and or the player that has the issue they're applied when the issue is resolved, but keep in mind that the resolution also cancels the issue effects. Okay, so what he's saying pretty much is once the quest is accepted, there will be uh, negative effects that occur, and then you have to kind of solve them, the player or the AI. 
And then once they are solved, you get a resolution, which is obviously you get rewarded for it. And if it's not solved, you don't get rewarded for it. And it's usually negative rewards. Like, you know, you might lose relationship or something like that. And then he's trying to, okay, now here's the example. So he says, let's take the need grain seed issue quest, uh, which you seem to refer um, as an example from what I can tell. Okay, so this is the quest where you literally just have to give grain to a village. Um, you get the quest. If you have grain in your inventory, you can automatically complete it. If you don't, you have to go buy it somewhere and give it to them. All right, so the preconditions. There is a headman notable, so it won't occur in a town. Okay, so this can only occur in villages, obviously. And um, the other condition has to be is the settlement, pro uh, what's it called, produces grain. Okay, so this only can happen to settlements that produce grain. Okay, the nearby town market has less than 50 grain. Okay, so pretty much um, the settlement produces the grain. They don't have enough grain and neither does the town nearby. So if all that is checked off and also the grain price in the issue giver settlement is uh higher than the average price of the requested item in the world okay so pretty much whenever a town that is nearby a village that produces grain whenever it falls below uh 50 grain as the amount and also when the price of that grain uh goes above the average price like um of grain in the whole uh map then this uh will pop up this quest will pop up interesting now the effects, the issue effects. Um, okay, so if you accept this quest, um, depending on how long it takes you, there will be negative effects. So the negative effects are uh, zero point two, minus zero point two uh, daily uh, prosperity and minus zero point five loyalty. Interesting. So if you actually take forever to do this quest, the um, the village, if I'm not mistaken, will lose a lot. I don't even know this actually, but this is okay. Good to know. And then obviously the resolution, what happens when you complete the quest. Uh, they say, let's just look at the quest success and ignore the different player facing effects for companion versus player quest solutions. Okay. So if the issue is resolved. Okay. That means that the uh, issue effects will no longer happen. Uh, these right here will no longer happen if you uh, complete the quest, obviously. You get plus 10 quest giver power. Okay, I don't know what that actually is. Oh, you make the notable stronger. The guy who you did the quest for, you make him stronger. You get plus 2 relationship with that same notable. Plus 1 relationship with all the other notables in the town because you obviously helped out the... Not the town, the village. You obviously helped out the village. And you also get 50 town prosperity. Because obviously you helping the village that produces the grain for the town will actually impact the town as well. So there you go. Um, while these are kind of small, they do still impact the world. Just not enough for us to really see, you know, if that kind of makes sense. But uh, very cool. I think this would be very cool if we, um, I know probably be a lot to write out. But if the devs low-key want to write this out for every single quest, I think it will be super interesting. Super interesting. This is a very cool thing to know and maybe like further down the line if they want to like, you know, create a post that goes over all the things that about quests, I would love to go over it. I think it's a very cool concept. But all right, all right. Uh, then we have another reply. Uh, well, we have a quote from a player. The player states, but then do they have enough impact for the quest to be worth doing? Will your village fall in despair if you fail to deliver and will it flourish? Or do noticeably better if you succeed in the quest. All right, so um, here's how I see it, right? So since quests can be done by AI and also the player, I think making the quests affect the world very heavily is not the right way to go about it because that will, in a way, change the world too quickly. And, you know, for example, like you have all these AI around the map doing quests as you're doing quests as well. And if each quest has a huge impact on how the world will be uh, changed, you will literally, the world will change so quick. Like you, if you wait in a town for a couple of days, the world might change dramatically. You know, uh, different settlements might be taken. You know, a lot of different settlements might have rebellions. Just all of this stuff, just because you put so much emphasis on how much the quests give. I think that um, maybe certain quests should be given 
stronger uh, resolutions. Like, you know, if you solve them, if you, you know what I mean, um, beat the quest, then there should be a bigger impact. But I don't think all quests should have that impact, especially not a small quest like this one where you just give some grain to a village. You know what I mean? So that's my that's my theory of it but the dev states i don't uh get too deep into the balancing nitty-gritty of the issue quest but from my understanding at least part of the challenge is that issues can occur everywhere and players will not deal with all of them exactly what i just said you know what i mean the ai also deals with it so at the very least the issue effects need to be somewhat tame as otherwise you have failing settlements slash characters all over cal radio and it also becomes kind of hard to ignore them once you do own a settlement, even if you don't want to engage in that part of the game. Boom, boom, boom. So kind of what I said, kind of paraphrasing in a different way, that yeah, if you make it too crazy and the effects too crazy, then it will impact the game a lot. And obviously, you know, the settlements you own, they're going to change hands a lot more and uh, it will become very unstable, which might be cool to play, you know, once in a while, but uh, I don't think it will make it for stable gameplay overall. Uh, we got some more. All right, so we have another player quote. Uh, the player says, Is there any hint for the player to notice these changes after quests completed on, or for preconditions? Okay, so for right now, as I know, you don't really see... The only thing that really shows you is kind of like how much relationship you get, how much, um, how much obviously, how much you get paid, and um, that's pretty much it, if I'm not mistaken. You don't see much else from that. Um, depending on the quest, you might see a little bit extra of uh, either relationship or payment. But other than that, that's kind of how it goes. So like I said, it would be cool. So what he's hinting at is if we can get pretty much this description for all the other quests, which I think would be great, in my opinion. But the dev says it depends. Preconditions are not explained, and it would probably probably not be terribly immersive to do so that they don't tend to be too complicated though aka village is a grain producer area has low amounts and high price aka there uh is some form of shortage and there is a chance for a related narrative to arise yeah it's it's you know it's you know what i mean it makes sense issue effects are listed in the settlement variable tooltips quest rewards are partially highlighted uh others may not be but uh could be gathered from the settlement character stat changes. So yeah, you kind of have to like really look into the stat changes. And again, for most of these quests, it might not really affect it that much. You know what I mean? They also tend to make sense, aka character location, you help benefits in related stats. Exactly. Uh, their power might go up, the relationship might go up if you you know are successful, and it might go down if you're not. Uh, and then they say maybe a quest log entry could tally them up, though that seems like a hit or miss with the immersion again. I understand the whole immersion thing, but I think that um, you don't have to put it in the game. But I think if you can make like a post on the forums whenever, you know, someone has time to just put this for every quest, I think that would be sensational. And it would give me a lot of content. So do it. But all right. Uh, next, we have uh, another player quote. Um, the player states, the appointed governors need to start dealing with the quests. For better or for worse, if you appoint a lousy governor, you ought to have a failing settlement. But therein lies the fix. The player can help out with quests or the other party leaders. Uh, I guess. Um, I, don't, I don't know if the governor should do quests, but I think the governor should have stuff that is done. Maybe... Uh, maybe maybe they could introduce in the long run, or maybe a mod can come out where the governor, if you are the governor, the governor has to make decisions. And maybe you get like a prompt of like what decisions the governor makes, and those decisions kind of impact certain things in the settlements, right? That'd be kind of cool. But um, the dev responds: the player can only help with the issues that exist. If the governor resolves them, the availability of issues is reduced. That is true. So. Obviously, if there's governors in every single town, then all of a sudden there's no quests in the town. That also makes sense. So the same would be achieved by reducing the percent of issues to occur, but that comes with its own drawbacks, harder to target specific characters slash locations. We also already do have the AI Lords resolving some issues, though to me there's more 
uh, geared towards a living world and enabling and counteracting harsher issue consequences. Okay, so pretty much what he's saying is that, you know, you don't want the governors to really take on that responsibility because then the player won't have enough to do. And obviously the AI still does quests as well. So you kind of want to find that balance where the AI can do quests and also you can find quests as well. And I think we have one more. I think this is the last post. Yep. All righty. What is all this? Okay, so they're just copy and pasting what they say in the in-game dialogue. Okay, I'm just kind of slow, kind of quickly reading through it, seeing if there's anything of value. Uh, okay, so pretty much what he's saying right over here, I quickly skimmed through it, is the player is stating that it would be kind of cool if more information was shown. But um, again, the devs are saying that, you know, it's... Mm, you could still check it in game currently. It's just kind of hard to check it. Again, I don't agree or disagree with this. Uh, if they don't want to put it in the game, that's fine. But if they can make like a little post on the forums, also fine, you know. But all right, uh, what else do we have? I have another player saying, Art Lord's supposed to do quests too. I mean, if that's the cause, it shouldn't impact summons too much unless there's war. And uh, yeah, they do quests as well. So yeah, he's pretty much saying the same thing I said. And then um, he quotes himself. We just read this. And then he also states, if AI resolves issues too much, it means less opportunity for the player to focus on a location slash character. Personally, I would also want to avoid creating spider webs of significantly balanced relevance systems, various sandbox systems, not just war. Lord parties, governor availability, issues breaking economy of some and locations, various sandbox systems. If the sole purpose is to facilitate harsher consequences such effects, then spawning them at a lower rate would be much less prone to failure. All right, so pretty much what he's saying is um, if they were to have bigger consequences if failed and bigger rewards if completed, then they would have to spawn a lot less of them into the world to kind of balance out the everything else in the world. Because obviously a sandbox has a lot of things that um, kind of piggyback off each other and if one of those things breaks the whole game breaks you know so that's kind of the hard kind of like part of balancing a sandbox game without making it too crazy and uh most sandbox games can still be kind of um what do you call it in a way they can be uh you can cheese them to kind of like to to do exactly what you want to do and kind of you know make them into an easy mode kind of like uh play through if that kind of makes sense like if you know exactly what to do but, um, you know, to get a very good sandbox, you need to find that balance where regardless of which way you go about playing it, it's still fair in all aspects, if that kind of makes sense. I don't know how to exactly how to explain it, but even it out is the best way I can say it. But that pretty much does it. Uh, what do you guys think about quests? Uh, personally, uh, I'll be honest with you. I agree. Some quests are boring. Some quests are kind of cool. Um... I don't think they're meant to have the biggest impact in the world. I think it'd be cool if we had some quests that did do a really big impact, but we also do have quests that have a big impact on the player, like uh, the quest where you get um, your siblings back. That's a pretty big quest. Yeah, it's not a quest that you can do multiple times, but it does introduce a lot of characters into your uh, clan. Um, other than that, uh, I think they should add more quests. I think that'd be cool. Uh, add higher tier quests that you can only do, like say, for example, quests that you can only do as a ruler, quests that you can only do this. I think those would be very cool. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Are quests boring? Eh, I agree and disagree. That's my kind of end-all be-all. But I'll see y'all in the next one and uh, stay safe.